and stories that there were Muslims, blonde haired, blue eyed, white skinned Muslims who were being killed. Ethnic cleansing by Serbians, communists. And again, the West wants to get involved. And the West encourages the resistance. And the West supports the Mujahideen. Today isn't the day we go over the long story, but today is the day you do hear it from me directly. I'm on a plane flying from here in the United States, and I'm heading to Zagreb. I'm young, and I've heard the call. Come out to jihad. Defend your brothers and sisters. Stand the line for any Muslim anywhere on the world who goes and responds to the call of any Muslims who need defense is always a mujahid. Except during the time of Bosnia and Serbia and Croatia, for a Westerner to go there as a mujahid, he was still considered a freedom fighter. In the West, that was appropriate language. In the West, the West was in favor of those who were helping the Bosnians against the invading incursion from the Serbs, the atrocities being performed by the Serbs. And so the Western political agenda supported the Bosnish, and so those were considered Mujahideen. So, if someone went to Bosnia during that time, it would be technically okay to call them Mujahideen because from a Western political perspective, they were still classified by us as freedom fighters opposing the remaining Reds in the last struggle that still occurred on the globe after the fall of the last wall. But the true Mujahideen from all over the world just respond. You see, what happens in the Muslim law is if you are defending yourself, there is no draft, Mr. President. There is no draft, brothers and sisters. If you were attacked, you must defend yourself, period. You cannot run away from the fight. So anybody who defends the line and stands on the wall or holds the defense is always a mujahid. He does not need a political party or the recognition or a label or a badge or a designation or even military rank. He is defending himself. This is defense. This form of jihad is understood by all Muslims. Any Muslim defending themselves in defense is always a mujahid, and that will always be jihad, no matter what the situation is. And so there in Bosnia, the Bosnian Muslims were performing a jihad, even though their spiritual faith and their ritual practice may have been weak or lacking or totally non-existent. They are those who live and they have the right to defend themselves. And claiming that they believed in Allah and following the last prophet entitled them to the aid of any soldier in the path of Allah who wished to go to their service. That, in the Western world, was considered acceptable. And using the term jihad or mujahid in Bosnia was not a negative term for the majority, of course. There were always those who were in the right wing who were saying, this is part of the crusade and we got to be against the jihad. We're going to get to you, brothers and sisters. Oh, don't you worry. 
But for the majority of the West, in the political structure under the then Clinton administration, for that president, the jihad term was acceptable and those who went to Bosnia were considered mujahid. So there I was. Like any mujahid who finds himself in the middle of a war zone, it's not as easy as we said. Because just as those mujahideen started to feel the chaos and separate themselves, wheat from chaff, between those who are fighting in the path of the law and those who are fighting for a political agenda or for a nationality or for a tribal reason or for statehood or for money or for any other reason that is not purely for the truth of the light, then when they see the chaos and the conflict, they remove themselves from the battle. And people continuously remove themselves from the battle on the playing field as they begin to see the clarity of what's going on on the battlefield. And as the chaos developed in Afghanistan, many of the foreign or the Ansar or the helper Mujahideen began to leave the battlefield and left off the whole of Afghanistan as a front. Many still conducted camps and trainings, and that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. But when we get to Bosnia, now the story gets personal. So there I am. We're not going to go over the whole story because that's a whole nother day, but I want those who are listening to the story of jihad to know that when you hear the story and the evidence is delivered by the name of Allah, it should be somebody who says, My name is Salim, Siddiqui. I am a follower of the Prophet Muhammad, and I am not a terrorist, my brothers and sisters, but I am a mujahid. And so they'll ask me, what happened in the battle? Did you see battle? You went to these countries. You were there during war. Did you see battle? Did you ever kill anybody? Like taking another life or being in the field of battle or harming another soul is a noble thing. This is not the case for a true warrior. This is not the way we engage in battle. So, just to clarify the point, answer, no, I have never killed anybody. Alhamdulillah. They ask you about the war booty. What did you get? Say to them, the booty for the believer is with Allah and his messenger. What do you truly get? from going to war. There are many who talk about jihad in the path of Allah and they are convincing you to kill yourself and to take your own life. That the answer that you are looking for is in your own death. Really brothers and sisters? I have looked for the truth and I have gone to the battlefield so let's tell you a story from the front line. There I am in the hills of Sarajevo during the heat of the conflict in the line of battle a lion in war weapon in hand looking at the front. And as the lines go down in battle it's never as pretty as it was during the time of the Prophet. The ranks are spread out. The forest is dark and grim. The enemy is on the other side. You can't even see where they're coming from. The line is not shoulder to shoulder like the Muslims pray. There's a brother over there. There's a brother over there. And you're standing there with your weapon, wondering, It's not pretty, brothers and sisters. True war is not glamorous or glorious. True war, for those who understand it, is service. My job is to remind you what the true story of anybody who has ever served a moment on the battlefield. And I'm not telling you all of the details that go up to this moment when you are faced 
life and death with the truth of who you are. And how many days of marching and deciding and marching and marching and marching and marching and marching that any true soldier has been through and what has to be gone through to truly understand. And it doesn't matter which army you've been in. If you've served in a line even a moment of your life, you understand it. And this is the truth for every single soldier, whether you were on the site of right or wrong. An American soldier or a Canadian soldier or a Japanese soldier or a Muslim Mujahid. Those who are serving in the line are not responsible for the decisions that the army commander makes. They're just soldiers in the line. But you deserve to hear a story of truth from someone who says, I am a mujahid fi sabilillah and I have served on the line. So there on the line, there I am standing there wondering what am I going to do. The fire starts to come at you. Gunfire goes. Let's rewind. Just a little bit. The moment before the first shot is fired. The moment of that peace. The moment of that clarity before the first shot is fired. I'm standing there on the hills of Bosnia. Mujahideen, to my right and to my left, brothers who served with me for the sake of Allah. I've got my AK in my hands. I've got my back to a tree. I'm coming down a hill and the enemy's at the bottom. Or in the brush. Or coming up at us. And we're not really sure where they are. 